Hi, I'm Gina. I'm Tim. <laughs> and our YouTube channel is Adventures with Heck and Back. Behind us is our Campanaw camper, who we affectionately call Heckinaw. And we got it in September of last year. Picked it up uh, Labor Day weekend. We started using it right away. So we've had it about six months now. And in that six months, we camped in it over a month. So we've stayed over 30 nights, 30 nights in it. We've towed it around uh, almost 4,000 miles. And so we thought now that we've had, you know, uh, quite a bit of experience with it, that we would share with you a few of the things that we still really love about it. And a few of the things that we'd like to, well, could, changes that could be made. Don't know if they can be, but would make us more comfortable. So one of the things that caught my attention when I was looking for a small boondocking, off-road, teardrop kind of trailer, most of the ones that are out there, you open the door, you crawl into the bed. Right on top of the bed, nothing else. This caught my eye that we've got the little, we call the vestibule, little seating area. You can sit one person on the bed, one person on the bench. You can get out of that weather quick, kick your shoes off, then crawl in the bed, whatever you want to do, instead of having to crawl right in on top of the bed. One of my favorite things about the Campanaw is this hatch on the end. I'm a little claustrophobic, and when we started looking at teardrop trailers, I was a little worried about that. But this hatch on the end is awesome. <laughs> so this is definitely my favorite thing. Um, it's got a removable screen here on the inside, and there is a window. So even when it's closed, there's a window behind here. Um, so we can open it up, get a lot of airflow. You can even have it open in the rain or only have it open partway. So it's got this handle, which makes it easy to close. And then there is a hook in here as well. I get it hooked on there. And you can do all this from inside. So you can hook it like that and it stays open about halfway. Um, if you go past horizontal, then it will close automatically. So you can open it from outside or inside. And you can take the screen off um, if you want the screen off, which is good for loading stuff in and out as well. So that's my favorite thing. <laughs> One of the other th things that we like about the Campana is its off-road ruggedness. It's built for going off-road. The whole frame is extra heavy duty. The fenders are uh, weight supporting. You can climb on the fenders. Um, it has I believe 13 inches or 18 inches of ground clearance. I'm not, I don't remember which. The Campanaw has a torsion suspension. So you don't have that axle bar going across between the wheels like you see on a lot of the bigger campers and stuff. So you got, it gives you your ground clearance. And it rides really nice uh, down the road and off the road. One of the other things that we really like about it and one of the reasons we purchased it is because the company has a commitment to environmental sustainability. Um, so the materials they use, um, you know, are sustainably harvested or um, acquired, produced. Um, they try to reduce as much waste as possible, like they reuse the window cutouts and the door cutouts for other things. They turn the door cutout into a side table. The window cutouts are turned into lap trays. So there's a lot of, of things that they do to reduce as much waste as possible. Um, and the whole um, electrical system is intended to be um, renewable. I don't know if renewable is the right word. Um, off grid. Yeah, as off grid as possible. So it comes with a Renogy um, portable battery char slash charger. Um, it does have, we got it with an air conditioner in it. The air conditioner has a rechargeable battery. 
you can get a solar system with batteries, which is something that we've been talking about a little bit. So that may happen in the future. Um, but that, so that's another thing that we really like about it. We just like that focus on um, sustainability. Okay, so there are a few things that we would like to change or would, would kind of minor annoyances. There really isn't anything major that we don't like about it, but there are a few things that are minor annoyances. So one of them is this door. <laughs> Let's see if it's gonna do it. We have lubed this door. What, what have we, we've done W, not W, WD-40? I've used WD-40 on it. We've I done believe dry. they put WD-40 on it when we took it in to get the rhino rack on it. Uh, I, you can see the white Cause on we, it. Because we've tried, we're trying is dry, dry lube. Is a, a dry lube. Right now. It, it quiets it for. A while. I mean. A week. Yeah. We just put it on two weekends ago when the kids were using it, when they were staying at the house. Yeah. So I, you know, like we're. And, it, and it's nothing of Campanos. It's, it's, it's just. It's, yeah. it's the manufacturer of the door itself. Yeah. It's a, a one piece thing. I don't, I don't know what it is. So this kind of drives me a little bit crazy. Like we're someplace that's totally quiet. Or we're up early because we often are up early in the morning. So if we're camping where other oh, people... Oh, come on. Be honest. It's when I get out in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. <laughs> it squeaks and wakes you up. It was, yeah. And, you know, so like I, I like to respect the peace and quiet <laughs> and the door. That's one of the reasons we like to get way out away from people is for the peace and quiet. And then the door squeaks. <laughs> and it drives me a little bit crazy. So that's one of the pet peeves, is the door squeaking. So another issue we just discovered on our most recent trip, we just returned from a trip that was very dusty. We haven't washed the Campana yet, and so you can see like how much dirt is still on the back here. And we did end up with some dirt in the pantry area, some dust. You And maybe you can see like just how fine this dust is. And it managed to find its way into the pantry area, mainly down here in the bottom part of the pantry, but a little bit up here in the top part of the pantry as well. There is a pretty hefty rubber seal around the doors, as you can see here. And this is the first time we had any problems with dust getting in. So whether it's an issue of just how fine the dust was, or Tim thinks maybe we had something pressing up against the door that was creating just a little bit of a gap for that dust to get in. So on future trips, we'll be really careful about how we're stowing our gear back there. And we'll give you an update to let you know what we discover. So another um, kind of minor annoyance again, nothing major. Um, and I should preface it by saying this is our first camper we've ever owned. So, you know, we're not familiar with campers and teardrops especially. Um, the walls inside are cold. <laughs> so when you get in there and you touch the walls, so you crawl into bed and you touch the walls, the walls are cold. Um, I think they're aluminum. Um, Camp and all, you can let us know if we're wrong, but I think the walls, the interior skin of the walls is aluminum. Um, and I know that that is a common material used in teardrops to keep them lighter, so to keep the weight of the trailers down. Um, the first time we got in it in the winter, those walls were pretty cold and you can heat the inside of the trailer up and the walls do get warmer. They're always cool. They never get like super warm. Um, but so that was kind of a learning curve for us, I guess, you know, we didn't realize that. Um, so we're kind of curious because again, this is the first camper we've ever owned. 
we're kind of curious whether that is a common thing with uh, teardrop trailers that use that kind of aluminum skin on the inside. And if anybody else has had that same experience. And if anybody has had that experience and has a remedy for it. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that we can put on the wall that will not... Kind of insulate oh. us. Yeah. Right. And so, again, it is. It's just yeah. one of those minor, it, minor things like we didn't, that we hadn't anticipated. Right. It, it, it's a, it's a other buyers take notice. Yeah. Just be aware. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, you know, it's not a major, like we, we cover up with blankets or in the summer, it's awesome. Like it is nice in there in the summertime. Um, in the winter, you know, when it's cold and the trailer is cold because, you know, we're not running heat in there or anything. Um, you know, we kind of insulate ourselves from the wall with the blankets or the sleeping bag or whatever. And it's certainly not uncomfortable or anything like that. But it can be a little startling if in the middle of the night you like uh, touch the wall. <laughs> it's pretty cold. <laughs> And I guess you can walk into the other one is uh, a heater, you know, a heater option. Mm, yeah. So that is something that we would probably change as well. We wouldn't yeah. mind. And maybe there is. So at the Could time be. that we bought it last year, there wasn't an option for adding heat. You could add air, which we did. Um, but there wasn't an option for adding heat. Um, so we'll have to check because there may be some option for heat. But because we are four season campers, um, we camp throughout the year, we would really like for there to be an option for heat. So that would be the other kind of thing that we would change. So the last thing that we would say that we don't really like with the Campana is that there are just a few places where they've used Velcro to hold something down. It's never anything <laughs> crucial or critical to the functioning of the Campana. Um, it's really just like some little extras. And again, like I said, we just got back from a trip. We haven't washed the Campana yet. Um, so you can see the dust and dirt all over it here. Um, so right here on the front hatch, they have these dust covers, you know, to keep the dust out. And they've added this extra rubber flap and they've used Velcro. Well, the heat and everything, you know, sun shining on the black surface here has made the Velcro come undone, come off. So it's an easy fix, you know, it's easy to replace it and everything, but it seems like there should be a better solution than that, than the Velcro itself. So overall, we're really happy with our purchase. Um, it's, it's not a cheap trailer. It's pretty pricey. It's around $30,000 for the trailer. Um, and then depending on what options you get. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the really well-made, I mean, that's, that's you know, within the price range for some of the really well-made teardrop trailers out there. Um, we would still purchase it again. We yeah. haven't yet discovered anything that makes us regret our decision to purchase it. Yeah, we looked at uh, bigger ones before we went and looked at this one, before we bought this one. And we could have bought a big one with a bathroom in it and shower for a little more than 30000 But it would not have gone down some of the back roads that we uh, go down. It would have really been probably close to the maximum of Heckenbach's towing capacity, mm -hmm. which, you know, that's not what we wanted. So after six months, these are our thoughts about the Campana. We're curious what you think. Is there any of the features that you think would be really great? And are any of the cons deal breakers for you? Let us know what you think in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video.